Hey free to play gang, welcome back to another video. I foresee this video to be quite long because we have to talk about 44 different aspects and whether they should be buffed, no change or nerf. Now, I am not in a position to nerf aspects, okay? So I'm not sure where this opinion came from. Maybe it's because of the title of my YouTube video saying that should these aspects be nerfed, but the point of this entire poll is not to let Lilith Games think that, okay, certain aspects need to be nerfed, certain aspects need to be buffed, or what should they do with whatever, okay? The part of this poll is just to understand the, the average player base. So we currently have about 1,000 plus responses, which is a good set of data that we have. And based on this information, it's going to be quite reliable, so we can kind of like weed out the trolls, we can kind of weed out uh, players who have a little bit extreme beliefs on certain aspects, for example. And it's more so to give everyone an idea of what everyone else believes in. And I think that's very helpful because our beliefs are completely different based on our experiences. And I cannot say for sure that, you know, my understanding of the game is superior to your understanding of the game. Because that differs based on your current state in the game, your, your objectives in the game whatever. So for today's video, we are going to discuss a little bit more about what the general population of the dislike player base thinks about every single one of these legendary aspects. And no, I did not forget about the epics and the rares. I just don't feel like it's really that exciting to talk about them because they are, in most cases, quite free to play. There is a lot of events throwing out all the epic aspects, so even if you feel like this epic asper needs to be buffed, the thing is, everyone else also has that epic asper at R6 maybe, and it's just more of like, if no one is using that asper, then no one is using that asper. It doesn't really hurt as much as like having an R6 Biondina, for example, where you have no idea where you can use that Biondina. So that's a little bit different. So that's why I want to talk about legendary aspers and legendary aspers only, especially since I think they are kind of like pushing out more legendary aspers than epic aspers in general. So the legendary aspers is going to be a pool that gets wider a little bit faster. So I think we should just focus more on legendary aspers. That's what I'm saying. Okay, anyway, let's start off with Abigail. Most players agree that there are no changes necessary for her. I am also on this side of the fence, which is no change. Uh, I believe that she's really good at what she does right now. There's very little reason why you need to tweak her around anymore. I think she's perfect as it is. Now moving on to Ahmed, same thing as Abigail. I feel like he's in a really good position. I feel like at R6, he's a little bit stronger than he needs to be because 30% chance for you to heal your allies when they get attacked is uh, it's pretty insane. But aside from that, I do feel like he's currently at a, at a kind of good place right now. No changes required. Next up for Ashley, there is a bigger proportion of players who think that she receives, uh, she needs to have a buff. I'm not super sure why this is the case. If you guys think that she needs a buff, let me know down in the comments below why you think this is the case. I'm actually super curious because I think right now Ashley is like really, really strong. Like she's in a really good position right now. Next up, we have Biondina. So like I said, most of you players uh, will not understand why she's so good or most of you players will just have her and just not use her at all. Now, I kind of understand because even for me, I do have her at R5. If I have her at R6, I'll cover her a little bit more. But even at R5, I don't really use her all that much because in terms of like PvP, there are better experts to use. I mean, I wouldn't say that there are better experts in terms of what she does, but they are just more holistic teams that would ensure a better win rate and uh, like a wider net, so to speak. So if I use a tanky team, I can win more defenses. I don't need to rely on a Bion Dina comp. So I understand that she is kind of lacking a little bit in terms of reasons why you want to use her. I mean, it makes a lot more sense to just run Chloe, for example, just to cleave stuff. Or maybe if you're talking about RTA, yes, she still is good. But there are possibly other better alternatives, like just running a speed control team, for example. So a one-trick pony like Bionina is probably not in a very good position right now. I, I, I kind of understand that, and I do believe that she does require a buff. Not because she's bad, but so as to make her a little bit more versatile. Next up, we have Brewster. I'm quite happy that most players agree that uh, he's, he's decent right now. And I, I fully disagree that he requires a buff. I think the main issue where players think that he needs a buff is because below R2, he's not really that good. But at R2 onwards, he becomes extremely, extremely good. So when I'm thinking about players who want him to be buffed, I'm thinking that maybe they want his R2 to go to his R0 state, which is completely understandable. Next, we have Camille. I'm very surprised that a lot of players want her to be buffed because firstly, we do not know what she can do at R6 just yet. We have yet to test her out. Uh, I'm looking forward to get her at R6 and then I can give you guys some showcases as well. But for the most part, I think it's still a little bit too early to talk about Camille. Now next we have Tangti. This is going to be a very contentious topic obviously because Tangti is, in my opinion, really quite shit at R0. I mean, he still does damage but he doesn't really bring a lot else. But at R2, he becomes really, really strong. And of course at R6, he's like insane. So I can kind of understand why players are saying to buff Tangti because most players do not really have an idea of how strong he is because I haven't also been doing many showcases on Tangti as well. I haven't been doing any R2 showcases. I have done one R0 showcase in the past, which is like, I have no idea what his kit does. I still do not understand what his third skill does. So I'm still waiting for my R2 Tangti before I like 
move on with a little bit more rigorous test just to understand why his third skill does. But for the most part, from what I'm seeing in endgame point war, he is very, very strong. And when you see an R2 Tangti, you kind of want to avoid teams like that, especially when they have the R2 Ethan and a speed lead as well. That makes them very, very hard to deal with. So yeah, in my opinion, I think Tangti right now, he's just an R2 Esper. It's not that he needs a buff. Now next, we have Cecilia, also a very contentious topic because uh, most players with Cecilia, like myself, won't really find any use for her outside of point wall and knockout right now. Maybe some players might use her in RTA, but I don't really think that that's going to be like a main thing for her. So I kind of understand why most players want her to get buffed. And I do also feel like maybe her third skill can be improved as well because it's just a heal. It adds one layer of immunity. That's about it. I feel like it wouldn't really hurt to give her two turns of immunity, for example, on her third skill. Next, we have Clara, and most players agree that she's decent right now. I don't think she needs a buff. I feel like she's really good as it is. Now, Dona, okay, I kind of understand. Most players want, her, want him to be buffed. Now, the thing is, it is not really so much of his kit that is a problem. It's more of his typing. So the thing is, he is going to be decimated by heights because height is just going to eat him up uh, any given day, right? And there are a lot of other controllers who eat him any day. So for example, Tricky, right? Strip buffs, land stuns, all that kind of stuff. He becomes redundant instantly. So I feel like coming from a kit perspective, he is decent. His kit is actually quite interesting. It's quite fun to play with. Uh, it's just his typing, which is the main issue, which cannot be buffed. So unfortunately, I'm going to be on the line, on the side of no change for Dona. And trust me, it really hurts because he's my profile pick after all. And next we have Elaine. A lot of players want her to be buffed. I feel like right now she's more of like a support that does a lot of multi hits that requires her to stun and land sleeps on like specific targets and all that. I feel like that is her role. In terms of buff, I think most players are looking at increasing her DPS output, which I think will definitely help her kit a little bit. But is it necessary from where we are right now? I'm not super sure. I feel like she is pretty decent for what she does right now. But then again, that's just completely my opinion. And if you guys are not running Mateo, for example, then you might not see a lot of value in her as well. Next up, we have Elliot. Same thing, a lot of players want him to be buffed. And I think the main thing is because his third skill, even though it cannot be resisted, it can miss as well, which is like so dumb. So I'm even talking about his R6 state. So he's not very good against Ollie comms. He's not very good against Sally comms because those guys are flow type and he's gonna like land a miss half the time, which completely sucks. So Elliot definitely needs a little bit of a rework, I think. Just by making him not able to miss anymore is gonna make him extremely broken. But from where he is right now, he's not good enough to counter some of the most meta support experts out there. Like Ollie, like Sally, like I don't know, maybe Ethan, I'm not sure. Next up, we have Embla, and most players are happy with her. I also agree. I, I feel like Embla is in a really good position. Ethan as well, I think he's in a really good position. Okay, so the weird thing is, if players, are, if players understand why he is good, they definitely have an idea that he's good at R2. And the thing is, if you know why Ethan is good at R2, why is it that you do not know why Tangti is good at R2? <laughs> so I'm not super sure. I feel like Ethan and Tangti, they kind of work together very well. Like, you will use them in the same places most of the time. I mean, aside from PvE content. But I feel like for these two espers, it's like globally known that they are just R2 espers. Now, moving on, Everett. Oh, wow. This is surprising. Some players want him to be buffed. I am a little bit in awe because he is honestly quite strong right now. I feel like he's really good. He definitely counters speed cleaves very, very well. And I'm not super sure whether he needs a buff right now. I feel like he is currently quite good. I, I feel this is my personal opinion about, about Everett. Like, I think the main reason why you want to use him is just in PvP content after all. Okay, moving on to Phantom Sisters, everyone wants to give her a buff and I think it's partly because the, the game has already announced that they are going to uh, update her stats, so please buff Phantom Sisters is essentially what everyone is saying. Now, my opinion about her is that the only buff that she really needs is just her cooldown. Aside from that, I think the rest of her skills, they are all really fun to use, they are really good. So she has invincibility, she has cleanse, she has healing. Oh wait, does she have invincibility? I think she has, right? I think it's on the second skill. <laughs> I can't really recall, but I'm pretty sure she has a speed up buff as well. Anyway, my point is, she's pretty good as she is right now, it's just her skill cooldowns which is her major setback. I think that's probably going to be like the main thing that would definitely help in buffing her and... Okay, Feng Lucy. Uh, obviously, a lot of players are going to say to, to nerf her. I'm actually quite surprised that so many players are saying to have no change for her. And for the ones is like the 5%, for the 2% of, of the players who want her to be buffed. Uh, there are some trolls here, but we already knew that this was going to happen anyway. Okay, so my perspective as a Feng Lucy user is she is definitely broken. Definitely like ultra, ultra broken. Now, should she be nerfed? I I feel like it's too late to nerf her. So the thing is, it's different from Shen Pin. So uh, very recently, I supported the Shen Pin nerfing movement. And the reason for that is because Shen Pin was not officially globally launched. That's why I was able to, to push for her nerf. And indeed, the developers decided to nerf her. But the same cannot be said for Feng Lucy right now, because Feng Lucy has been out and about for a long period of time. And I don't think it's uh, that wise to nerf an Esper that a lot of players have been paying for. 
And the same goes for Champagne right now. So now that Champagne is released, it's officially too late for you to nerf Champagne. It doesn't make sense anymore. By nerfing her, you're gonna kill a lot of the player base. Instead, what I can suggest is just some minor adjustments to Feng Nuzi and Champagne, for example. So for Feng Nuzi, you don't necessarily need to like improve or deprove any of the things that she already do. You could maybe branch out laterally so that she becomes you know less viable in some places and more viable in certain places i wouldn't really consider that a nerf it's more like a change in a kit again i'm not super sure what should be done about feng nusi i feel like she's just extremely broken what i think should have happened is that on release she shouldn't have four hits she should just have three hits and the third hit would then reduce uh, extend the cooldown of the targets but right now she has four hits so she strips four buffs and she cooldown resets twice which is like insane it's freaking freaking broken and i'm saying this as a feng nusi user as well I, I abuse her in every single content that i can abuse her in in pvp yes i'm definitely gonna use her in knockout yeah i mean like everything in pve everything absolutely everything i just want to dominate content just because i have her but i do feel like this is not the way that the game should be played it kind of detracts a little bit from the strategy as well now let's move on to happy thoughts okay gabrielle most players agree that she's good that's fine gaius most players agree that uh, he's good, but there's definitely going to be a bunch of players who think that he needs to be nerfed. And the thing is, Gaius is a free-to-play expert right now. Everyone can agree to that. Everyone can accede to this belief that Gaius is indeed free because you can buy from the wish pool, and he's one of those first few experts that you must go for because he's going to change your account that much. And that is the testament to how strong he is. Now, the thing is, should he be nerfed? I think for the most part, probably not. Because in PvP, he's not like the be-all and all. He is a flow type after all. He's not going to be good against a lot of the wind type experts like Gabrielle, Tricky, Sienna, Ahmed. Like these are all the major meta espers and he is not always going to be very efficient against these, against these espers, not even with Strampin. And I think in terms of PvE, just because everyone has him, then you know what, it doesn't really matter all that much because you're not going to be like competing with other players and like measuring whose guys has a like big, bigger PP size, right? So I don't really think it matters all that much. I don't think he needs a nerf anymore because he's currently a free-to-play esper. If he's not free-to-play, then I can kind of understand a little bit more about why players want him to be nerfed. Now moving on to Hyde, so a bit of a mixed bag as well, so most players want him to remain as he is. There is a big portion of players who want him to be buffed and it's no surprise by the way, and a big portion who wants him to be nerfed. So this obviously shows the difference between who is an early game player, who is a mid game player, who is an end game player. Now in my opinion, the early game players would want him to be nerfed because it's very hard to deal with heights, especially in like PvE content or maybe in like point wall 10 and below or something like that, right? Heights are like dominant over there. Now the mid game players are the players who are suggesting no change for height because height is relatively good as, at what he does but the thing is there are still effective counters like Sender and all that but I think it's the end game players who want a buff for height in my opinion, I think because right now I'm on the side of the fence who wants height to be buffed because I think currently right now he's lacking a little bit in the far end game PvP meta because there are a lot of ways that you can deal with heights and he's pretty much just a punching bag like his dps output is actually not that good like he will need a lot of hits just to take out any one of my tanky espers it is no joke at all in the tanky meta he is really not that good anymore but with that said i don't think there is a need to change height at all because i do feel like him being really good in certain areas of the game is actually what makes him so special so for him to be really good in like point wall 16 and below for example that is probably where his niche is but to move on to like 0.117, 0 0.118, where you start to see a lot of really, really tanky espers. And I think it's okay that height loses his value over there. I think it's perfectly fine. I think certain espers excelling in certain parts of the game or certain stages of the game is completely fine. I don't think that requires any adjustments whatsoever, but that's my opinion. Now, Ife, a lot of players want her to be buffed. I don't think she needs a buff at all. Hear me out. I don't think she needs a buff at all. I think her kit is perfect. I think everything about her kit is good, except that the game needs to create content that allows her to shine. So right now, Kronos, Apep, Fafnir, you cannot poison these enemies. So she's immediately useless. And like, for example, in the Calamity Island, there is a turn limit. So even her first skill, which uh, at R6 gives her additional turns, that is going to eat into your turn limit as well. And for most content in this game, Poison is not really that good because you kind of want to kill the enemies before they take their turn so that they control you or they deal damage and all that. So I think right now where it stands, Poison experts are really not that exciting. So that's the reason why Ife is bad. But like I said, it's not because she is bad, it's because of the content in this game right now. Now moving on, we have Intisa and I'm not surprised. I'm really not surprised. So the thing is, Intisa, I feel like she's good as she is. And I can kind of understand why players want her to be buffed because there's not a lot of room for her to be useful right now. Like, where would you use her Intisa, right? Will you use her in Dust Lot? Yes. Will you use her in Kronos? Yes. Where else? No. <laughs> so she's kind of like, it's kind of like in that situation where it just makes a lot more sense to use the black or the red twin as opposed to using her, because you can use the white twin that just completely makes the, the red twin completely bonkers, right? I think Intisa only truly shines when she's at R6 and she provides the team with an attack up buff, and from then on, 
she becomes very useful in more areas. Like you can use start to use her in like the temporal tower if you want to cleave stuff. She's like the attack buffer with the defense break as well, so pretty nice. But I think from where it is right now, where most players do not have her at R6, I do feel like she's lacking a little bit. And I don't think that having R6 as a requirement for an Esper to be useful is a good thing at all. So I also feel like maybe she should deserve a little bit of a buff. Next up, Jiang Jiu Li. Most players suggest no change, I agree. Uh, some players suggest buff. These guys are the end game players, by the way. The, the, the players who want him to be buffed. Now, the thing is, it's no surprise that uh, Jiang Tuli dies super quickly. I personally recommend you to build him a little bit tankier, but that's just me. But I guess the reason why most players want him to be buffed is because it's super hard for you to build him. You need him to have a lot of good stats because he needs to run on the Astro set, which detracts from your total stats. You cannot have extra attack percentage from wall set. You cannot have the extra crit damage from the Thunder set as well. I mean, of course, it really depends on how you want to use him, but for the, for the most part, the Astro set is probably the best. So that's probably why you're not feeling like he's performing as well as he needs to. But the thing is, he's really good in the point war offense team, he's really good in all kinds of knockout, and he's really good in holo battles and RTA. That is where he shines in, PvP content. So the thing is, if you're able to make him shine, if you're able to give him the right stats, then he is currently actually quite good. In my opinion, he just performs really terribly in a defense setup, not in an offense setup. Excluding knockout, because knockout is fully auto. Okay, moving on to Jin Yu Yao, I am surprised to see that players want her to be buffed. In fact, I feel like Jin Yao is like, please nerf that shit. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm not suggesting you to nerf her, but uh, at R6, she's, she's so stupid. Okay, at point one eighteen, she's completely stupid. She's like, an R, she's like an R6 Sally or something similar, something stupid like that. I feel like most players do not really understand why she is so powerful. And that's why I'm actually going to do an R6 Jin Yu Yao showcase just to explain a little bit more about why she is so good at R6. And I mean, even at R2 and above, even at R2, she is good because she gains 30% AP whenever any one of your allies get debuffed, which is amazing. So I think she's not really understood because most players are not at like high tier point one, for example. Now next up, Liora, I think most players are going to suggest no change. Yep, that was right. Uh, Louis, a lot of players want to buff Louis. Okay, I, I agree, I agree. So as an R6 Lewis user, I do feel like it's still very difficult for you to use him in the right way because there are many things that could go wrong. So number one, you might accidentally kill an Esper on your second skill and if you do that, his third skill is useless. Or like number two, even though you use your second skill and your third skill effectively, you may not overkill the enemy to that great of an extent. So right now I feel like he is still a poorer performer than an R2 Emblau, which is a lot easier to build, a lot easier to obtain as well. Uh, Louis definitely needs some kind of rework. I'm not super sure just yet because his kit is actually quite nice. Like he is quite holistic in my opinion. Like his second skill has seer debuff which is amazing and he has a crit rate buff which is really good. His third skill increases a lot of his own DPS especially even at R6. A lot of extra DPS just goes into his third skill. So I'm not super sure how he can be changed. His entire kit is actually pretty exciting in my opinion. But it's just that in practice that looks a lot different than on paper. Now next up, Liling. Most players want him to be buffed. Not surprised over there. Uh, Lucas. Most players suggest no change. Uh, the rest want him to be buffed. I think it's probably going to be his prop rate on his third skill, mostly. And now Mateo. Most players suggest no change. I agree as well, no change. Uh, the rest want him to be buffed. I'm not super sure why that is the case because his damage output is really high right now. I'm not super sure what the buff is to be honest. Is it like more AOE attacks? Let me know down in the comments below. Now, Nama, obviously these are like the mid-game players. Those players who suggest no change, they are the end-game players. Those are the guys who already understand how powerful he is. Now, the problem with being in the mid-game is that most players run the speed teams, right? So most defenses you see, they will be like Oli defenses, tier defenses, Yuhime defenses maybe. So Namas will naturally not be useful in like point wall 14 for example. It makes a lot more sense to just run a speed cleave comp. So I can kind of understand why most players suggest a buff for Nama, but uh, in my opinion, <laughs> He's probably so strong right now that he might even require a nerf, but no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. From where it stands right now, I feel like Nama is just an Esper that you would use in the endgame. That's about it. So, like I said, just because an Esper excels in a certain stage of the game doesn't mean that you need to tweak him at all. Doesn't mean that you need to nerf that Esper, doesn't mean you need to buff that Esper. It is just as simple as this Esper excels in this part of the game. So the same goes for Height, right? So Height is better off in like the middle part of the game, but Nama at the end part of the game is going to one shot a height any given day. It's super easy. And the best part is you don't even need your Nama to be R6. You can have your Nama at R5 or maybe even R3 and it's still going to one shot stuff. It's really that strong. Now next we have Oli, again, no changes. And Ophelia, I think most players are, su are suggesting for a buff because um, in my opinion at least, 
holo battles kind of scuff right now so there's very little reason why you want to use ophelia you can use her in point war but yeah at the same time because there are like revivers like cecilia for example so it doesn't really make sense to bring in ophelia to one shot stuff because her speed is relatively low it's a lot more meaningful to run a sender for example who does a lot of good dps and he has high speed as well so i can kind of understand why people want her to be buffed i personally feel like she is okay right now. I think she's okay. Her DPS output is really quite insane. I'm not sure how else can we buff her, like increase the number of hits that she does. I, I don't think so, because that completely breaks her kit in my opinion. So I'm not super sure how players want her to be buffed. Let me know down in the comments below. Next up, we have Raven. Most players want her to be buffed. I kind of agree. I've talked about this before as well. Sadly, most players want her to stay the same. There are a group of players who want her to be buffed and uh, uh, about the same proportion of players who want her to be nerfed. Now, this is obviously the spread between early, mid and end game players. It's the same thing. Make an educated guess down in the comments below where you think players are voting or polling for her from. So this 12.5%, do you think they're early game players? This 8.1%, do you think they're end game players? You let me know. Now next up we have Sienna and most players agree that she's okay. Okay, I think that's fine. I don't think she needs a buff at all, man. She's like so freaking strong. She's like so strong, not even at like, I mean like at R2, she's already amazing. I'm not sure where the buff is needed, to be honest. Now Tang Xuan, okay, okay. This gives me good hope that I would be able to make good Tang Xuan R6 videos coming really soon. So my Tang Xuan is currently at R5. I cannot wait for him to be at R6 because he is broken AF. He is so freaking strong right now. He's probably the biggest DPS Esper in this game, aside from like setup Espers like Nama, for example, or Embla. You can mark my words, okay, 29th of May, as in when I'm recording this video. You can mark my words that Tang Xuan, his damage output is actually one of the highest in the game right now. Now the next Esper we have Teva, I'm just gonna assume mostly gonna be buffs. Yep, mostly gonna be buffs. Uh, TM mostly gonna be buffs as well. I'm really surprised that all of these Aspers that players are suggesting to be buffed are actually the, the same Aspers that were mentioned in the developer's notes as well. Okay, it's not really a developer's notes, but like that little tweet that this slide sent out, right? So are you guys just suggesting this because the tweet went live? I'm not actually super sure. Or do you guys truly believe that all of these Aspers need to be buffed? Okay, next up, Tricky. I'm just gonna assume that there's a most players are gonna say no change, but there's gonna be a bunch of players who say nerf. Yep, I mean, okay, it's kind of like, eh, I guess. Why do players want him to be buffed? What the heck? He's like broken, dude. He's insane. Freaking insane. And next, we have Unas. Uh, wow. Nerf, I see. I'm not super sure how you're gonna nerf him because his kit is just whatever that he does best. AP pushing, right? So 30% AP pushing. Fine. If you're gonna reduce his maximum speed, then that is gonna be a major nerf in my opinion. But for the most part, I think Unas is really good as he is right now. I mean, if you do not have him, you're definitely gonna lose out a lot in many different content. Same as me, I do not have an Unas. It's definitely impacting my day-to-day -day gameplay. And Champagne, oh, <laughs> most players want her to be nerfed as well, not surprised. And the 20% of the players who want her to have no change right now are probably players who have a better understanding of her utility and her usefulness. And the rest of the, what? 1.5% of players who want her to be buffed are players who already own Shredpin. <laughs> now next, Yamato. Most players want him to be buffed. I fully agree as well. I feel like he needs a kit rework. I think his main selling point is probably his speed lead. Aside from that, the rest of his kit is kind of like, I don't know, man. I need to be surprised. I really need to be blown away by what he can do. Like given his kit right now, I need to be wrong. I need to be fully wrong in order for my opinion about him to be changed. But right now, I do believe he needs to be buffed. There's no reason why I'll be using him. Now we're almost there. We're almost there. Yun Chuan, next. Standard, really good as well at R2, fantastic. I think the players who want him to be buffed are the players who do not have him at R2 just yet. So I think they want his R2 effect to be down to R0, maybe. I think that's probably the buff that people are looking for, which I think is actually not a bad idea. I feel like he should be good at R0. He's, he's like, you know, there are all these Aspers, man. There's no reason why these Aspers need to be shit at R0. They should still be good. Like like R2, R4, R6, that should just add on to their, to their effectiveness, like increase the damage output, or maybe like, I don't know, give them more speed or more stats, for example. It shouldn't be a necessity for their kit to even be useful at all. So actually, I think for Yun Chuan, I am on the side of buffing him in a way that you move his R2 down to his R0. I think that is the basic requirement for him. To add, he's not even an Esper that you can wish from the wish pool, so why not just make him good at the start, right? Moving on to Yu Hime, most players want her to be buffed because, you know, we talked about her interaction with Ashley, and that sucks. And also your multipliers on her third skill, not really that good. So if you're not able to reduce the enemy's max HP, or if your synergy is like completely off, then you're not going to be able to benefit a lot from her kit. And the thing is, Yuhime is probably one of those Aspers that does not work well with so many different Aspers. So number one, Ashley. She does not work with Ashley. Number two, she does not even work with Shen Pin because the major part of Yuhime's damage is not from her actual DPS, but from the HP removal itself. And that will not scale with the horse buff. So she lacks a lot of synergies with many different Aspers. 
Now finally, we have Zora and most players suggest for a buff. Kinda understand, you know what, just move her R2 down to R0. Another one of those Espers, right? Just give her a defense break at the start. It's not gonna hurt anything, it's not gonna destroy the meta, it's not gonna ruin the game. There are many players with R2 Zoras who don't even feel like she is worth using because of her typing. So yeah, that's it for this video. Currently, we have 1,116 responses. And I think when you're actually watching this video, there will be probably like 1,300 or something like that because I'm currently recording on the 29th of May and you'll probably be watching this on the 30th of May, I think. But yeah, thank you everyone for your inputs and I will probably share this somewhere. Maybe like I'll share the results in like a Google Sheets where you can download it for yourself. I'm not sure. But truly thank you everyone for your inputs. This is a lot of work that we have done compiled together. And all of your thoughts, all of your opinions, all of your suggestions, everything is distilled into this single poll itself. And for someone like me who cares a lot about data and the truth, I am very thankful that I'm finally able to understand you guys a little bit more and your opinions about every single one of these aspects as well. And I think this is very interesting as well because this truly shows the different mentality and different mindsets of, of various players across the entire, I don't know, 1,000 of you guys or so, right? So let me know your thoughts about this poll down in the comment section below. Would you like to see more of this in the future? If you want to see more plus any other extra information, any other extra like small nuggets of stuff, let me know what you're looking for as well and I'll try to implement it in the next polling as well. I know some of you guys said to include the delete option for Shen Pin. I kind of agree as well. The delete option should be there. Maybe you guys can look forward to the next update in this polling spreadsheet. <laughs> All right, but with that said, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content. Now with that said, this has been Dairy Free to Play. And as always, I will see you in the next video.